Thank you, Father God. You're awesome. You're amazing. There's nobody like you, Father. Father God, we're so grateful for all that you've accomplished in our lives and things that you continue to accomplish in us. Father, we understand that it's not anything that we can do in our own ability, but it's the abilities that you give us and that you allow us to walk out to see the fulfillment of your promises for our lives. And Father God, today is not about me. It's not about us. It's not about the football game. Today, Lord Jesus, is dedicated to you. It's dedicated to your Holy Spirit and allowing you to do what you want to do. Father God, our expectation is not in man. Our expectation is in the Holy Spirit. And however you want to move, however you want to lead, Father God, I pray that we be a willing vessel with open hearts and open minds to allow you to minister the way you want to minister. And Father God, I thank you that you are that great expectation. When our expectations are in you, we are overwhelmed by what you do, Father God. And so, Lord, we thank you for having your way this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your ability. We thank you for your strength. In Jesus' name, if you agree with that, shout it out. Amen. Amen. Whew. If you don't recognize me, I shaved my beard. I'm Pastor John. If you were like, where's John? That's not John. That's some guy that shaved his beard. So my wife and my kids were like, don't shave the beard. Nehemiah's like, Dad, you look mean with the beard. I want people to think you're mean. And so I'm like... <clears throat> So I'm like, yeah, I don't want people to think. I mean, if I'm Christian and I represent Jesus, I want people to be able to approach me and I can talk to them and be nice. And, uh, you know, so, but, uh, you know, so the focus of today, what I really want to talk about, something that um, I've mentioned it before in the past is I've ventured out just this, this year and part of last year, I ventured out and started like a YouTube channel. And most of my you know, information that I give is to be an encouragement. And um, <clears throat> the funny thing about doing YouTube, so it's like a vlog, and um, the funny thing about it is a lot of vloggers, you're, you're doing this stuff on camera in public. So you're in front of people, you're at stores, you're at restaurants, whatever, you're walking in a mall, and you got a camera in front of you, and you're talking to a camera, and people are like, I can see people, because I have like a little reverse lens or uh, like an LCD screen, and so as I'm walking past people, I can see people turning around like looking at me, you know, just like making faces or like waving at the camera. And, uh, you know, so it, it, it's just kind of funny, but, you know, it's a step of faith. But in, in some ways, um, it, it's scary. And one of the things that, you know, the Lord was kind of dealing with me as far as ministering about is, you know, about fear, you know, but that we need to be fearless. Because there's going to be things that God asks us to do. In our own ability, we're going to wonder, like, yeah, that's not going to happen, God. You better ask my wife, or you better ask somebody else to do that. Because, yeah, I, I can't do that. I've never done that before. And truth be told, I've never done any video editing before. One time uh, when I was a youth pastor, uh, I did some video editing for our youth group just for, like, a promo video. And that was, like, the only time. Other than that, I just picked it up and I tried uh, looking at YouTube and just learning things, figuring it out as I go, figuring out different camera settings, uh, equipment to get, and uh, just to kind of figure out, you know, like, how do I do this? I've never done it before. And that is a scary thing to be able to do something that you're not familiar with. And when I started doing it at my job, I, I, I expressed my interest in getting into the media, part, uh, media department. I work for Cox Communications. If you guys don't like Cox, don't boo me down, okay? <laughs> I'll just say our internet is amazing. If you have problems, don't call me. No. <laughs> but um, so, um, so I expressed my interest at work. Like, hey, I, I really like the media department. I wanna. I've worked outside for a long time, for many years, uh, since I was pretty much out of high school. And some of you are like, dude, how old are you? You're like 20 years old. No, I'm, I'm 36. So I've been, you know, in the workforce for quite a while, but I've always worked outside and I see older people working outside and I'm like, man, I don't want to do this when I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. I want to find something where I can work inside. And so they expressed that interest to one of our directors. Um, and it just so happened at the same time that I expressed the interest, the guy that used to do all the video stuff for, we'd have these big year end award ceremonies where they would shoot videos do all the editing and then put it up on a PowerPoint and present it to our whole company. And they would do like an award ceremony process through that. And so I'd never done anything like that. 
And so my director approached me and said, hey, uh, I want you to do our year-end videos. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so it's crazy because, again, fear can rise up. You know, when God is asking you to do something that's out of your comfort zone, when, when you've never done anything before in that degree, uh, it's scary to step out. It's scary to be the one that's kind of the center of the attention, the center of focus, because you always, to me, my thought process is people are going to critique, people are going to judge, people are going to be like, uh, last year was better than this year, you know, but I had to get over that. And I feel like, you know, for a lot of times as Christians, if, uh, if an opportunity presents itself, no matter what it seems like, I believe that God has given you that opportunity. I believe God chooses who he presents those opportunities to. And for me, in that situation, I don't want to be that person that is like, yeah, no, God, I don't want to do it. Instead, I'd rather trust in God that if he presented me with the opportunity, that he's going to give me the strength, he's going to grace me, he's going to give me the ability to, to complete it from start to finish. And so this was last year when that happened. And um, so it was successful, everybody liked it, and then I was asked to do it again this year. So they took me out of working in the field and doing all these <laughs> installs and working in the attic and stuff like that in uh, uh, November, from November to January. And I shot about 13 different videos, did all the editing, did all the voiceovers, did everything, put the PowerPoint together. My director last year did the PowerPoint presentation for me, and this year I, I kind of worked up the encouragement. And I told him, hey, I've never done PowerPoint, but if you're busy, I'll do it for you. And he's like, great, do it. I'm like, oh, shoot, I wanted him to say no. <laughs> and so, so real quick, I had a couple weeks left, and so real quick, I, YouTube, uh, went through it, learned it really quick, was able to smash it all together, and um, even our VP uh, from the company was there watching the videos and made the comment, like, these were, like, the best videos I'd ever seen. And so... <clears throat> I should show it. No, I'm just probably going to have it. <laughs> but, um, you know, so but when God is asking you to do something and you're willing to step out on a limb, even though it seems impossible and unnatural, it's amazing what God can do with your willingness to just say yes to him. Yeah. It's like when you pray for somebody, you know, you probably, you know, if anybody's ever prayed for anybody, the nerves work up to pray for somebody because you're like, oh, are they really going through that? Is that something that they're really dealing with? But if we're able to work up that boldness to just do what God is asking us to do, it's amazing how God can change a situation if you're just willing to listen to him. This scripture is Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that trips us up. See, I think it's amazing because God gives us opportunity. And how do we use this opportunity to glorify God? I believe when God places something in our path, when God uh, blesses us with an opportunity to take a step in faith, it's not so that we can get credit. I think everything is like a revolving door. God blesses us with things and God opens the door for us to be able to have opportunity to do things. But it's up to us to give that glory back to God, to magnify Him. Why? The scripture says, even though I believe this is the grandstands of heaven, people were surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses, but I also believe this applies to the natural, that we are surrounded by people that look at us and are going to wonder, how is this guy going to represent, or how is this lady going to represent Jesus in that situation? See, any opportunity that comes my way, I don't want it to be that I get credit. To me, I want it to be known that I can't do it in, in my own. I can't do it. I was scared. My knees were shaking. I felt like buckling. I was scared. But yet, when I stepped out and when we trust God, it's God that graces us to be able to do the things He presents to us. And because of that, we can glorify Him and we can thank Him because He made us able. Amen. 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 Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Amen. So the sin that easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So many times we get caught up with what's going on around us. This last year, I used to get into politics big time. 
and I would get so frustrated. And, uh, you know, so I'd get into the politics and I'd just see like, man, this, this, is, uh, this is crazy. You know, how is any of this, you know, any of these things going on, how is it right? You know, I, I found myself getting fleshly, like I wanted to retaliate, you know, and I wanted to go out and strike and hold up a sign and say, you're wrong, you know, and all these things. And then what's, whatever's going on with this abortion stuff, I mean, it's like, you know, it's frustrating. But yet I had to step back from that and, and God spoke to my heart that, hey, I'm in control of this. I'm allowing it to happen. If you step back and look at everything that's going on in this world, it's, it's like a big puzzle. All the pieces are starting to come together for Christ's return, for, for the rapture of the church. So why am I going to fight against what God wants to do? What I can do in my, in my ability and what God has given me, what God has gifted me with, is to live a life that glorifies Him, to live a life that trusts in Him. So I, I feel as Christians, that's how we should be fearless, is that we should represent Jesus Christ in our daily lives, no matter what we experience, no matter what we face, no matter what's going on in the world. Our responsibility as Christians is to represent Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, we share, I share scripture about this all the time, to be the light of the world, a city on a hilltop that shines for everybody to see. So I want my life to shine. I want your guys' lives to shine. I want your guys' lives to represent Jesus. So it's comforting to know that when Jesus begins a good work in each of us, he's going to perfect it. He's going to bring it to a completion. Anybody ever complete the work that God has set before you yet? And sometimes I beat myself up and I'm like, dang, when am I going to get this? You know, when am I going to get there? In life, we're never going to reach that mark. In life, it's always, a, it's always a, a, a work in progress. It's always trusting in God every day. To trust God that he's going to bring you to where he needs you to be that day. You know, don't worry about tomorrow. The Bible says the, wor the worries of tomorrow, well, you know, it'll, it'll take care of itself. Focus on today. Focus on the difference that you can make today. If God is placing something in your path today, man, it's, it, man, take hold of what he's telling you. Don't allow fear to creep up in your life because if you allow fear to creep up in your life, it robs you from what God wants to do. Amen. So bringing his work to a completion and it's uh, used to, uh, for his glory and it's for the purpose of pointing others to him as the only source and hope and reason for being. The Bible is God's direct word to us. As we absorb his word into our hearts and allow it to penetrate our minds, it causes us to grow spiritually in ways we couldn't grow on our own. Our lives cannot be absent of Christ. We can't live the life God has called us to live without allowing him in it. So what do we do every day when we wake up in the morning? It's... God, today I dedicate today to you. I allow you to have your way. I want to be that vessel. I want to be that tool. I want to be that person that you use to minister to whoever it is you bring across my path. Lord, help me to hear your voice. Help me to know when you're leading me in a certain direction. God, today I dedicate it to you. Amen. Not God, let me do my thing first, and then I'll let you do what you want to do. No, you'll be more successful when you put God first, right. when you allow him to have his way, and he'll accomplish more by trusting in him than you could do on your own. So along with pursuing God, not always, uh, not always, but in many cases, self-doubt can begin to creep up in our lives and, uh, and interfere with our walk with God. So in regards to fear, what does fear do? Fear, it, it cripples an individual. It's a disabler of progress. Even though many want to step out of their comfort zone and step, into, uh, step out into faith, fear can keep you from taking that next step. It can keep you stuck and unaware of the potential, the purpose, or the true calling that God has placed in your lives. Fear makes a person susceptible to failure, prone to hopelessness. Fear is a curse. It robs the righteous of walking out their full potential. 
they were designed by God to create, or, uh, designed by God to walk out. Fear not only robs the righteous, but it robs the recipient of the gifts that God has placed in your life. So fear doesn't rob just an individual like me if I don't listen to him. There's a recipient of what we do. Our lives affect other people. You know, sometimes, you know, we feel like, oh, well, it doesn't really matter what I do. You know, it doesn't matter what I say or how I act in a situation. That's not true because people are looking at us. And even if people don't know that you're a Christian, guess what? If your life is dedicated to serving God and allowing God to have his way in your life, people are going to notice, you know, there's something different about this person. And in many cases, I've had people tell me, hey, what, what's different about you? Like, you're... You don't hang out with the, all, the other, all the other guys. You, you pray when you eat your lunch. You know, you're, you're, you're singing worship songs even though your voice is horrible. You, you're singing like worship songs. <laughs> she said she's going to turn the mic off. <laughs> but what's, what, what's different about you? You know, in this life, we're going to have tribulations, we're going to have trials, we're going to have things happen. You know, it's sad that, you know, I know there's families in here that just recently suffered losses of family. Um, you know, and it's a scary situation. I know a couple weeks ago when I was at work, I was sitting down doing some work, and then my sister calls me, and she's like, John, uh, something's wrong with mom. She's, you know, not remembering a lot of things that happened yesterday. She just took a shower. She doesn't remember what happened this morning. And so, like, I'm at work, and I'm in the middle of doing my job, and then I hear my mom panicking in the background. I'm like, oh, what do I, you know, like, what do I do? I can't go over there. I can't help her. You know, so I get on the phone with her, and I talk to her, and, you know, pray with her. And, you know, the best thing that we can do in those situations is just trust God. Amen. When we don't know what to do, we need to just trust God. Amen. You know, and I, I know and I believe that <clears throat> by just talking to her and praying with her, I know it helped out a little bit. You know, but God, He can do things we can't do. You know, so in the things that we can't do, that's where we just trust Him to, to take control. What's that song? Jesus, take the wheel. I was almost going to start rapping. She's going to turn my mic off again. So... It can keep you stuck and unaware of the potential, the purpose, or the true calling that God has in your life. Amen. Fear not only robs the righteous, we talked about that, but it robs the, the lives of the people that can affect. As our life is faithful to just trusting God, man, the influence that we can be, the light, the example that we can be into people that are hurting and going through things or suffering things, you know, our life can be an influence for, for good in their lives. So, um, I got a lot of stuff here. So, <clears throat> the gifts given to his children are to be used to point the world to Jesus. Jesus is not a fear-giving God. He is a fearless God. Amen. Amen. Full of grace, full of truth, yeah. and he lives in us. I like that. <clears throat> I like the fact that God chose to make a home in us. He didn't choose to make his home in our little bunny rabbit that we have at home. He didn't choose to make a home in, in you know, pastor's dog, you know, Shiloh. He didn't choose to make a home in, in your animals and your pets or a tree. No, God chose you from the foundation of the world to make a home in your hearts, to make a home in your lives. Why? Because it's amazing to know that we were made and created in the image of Jesus Christ. That's how valuable, that's how precious we are to him, is that we were made in his image. And not only that... But the fact that he chose to make a home in your heart and to allow you the opportunity to be used by him to reach people. That is amazing to see how God prepared that from the beginning of time up until where we're at now and to, to the future, you know, as it comes. That God called you, God appointed you. And we should not allow fear to cripple us. We should not allow fear to disable us from doing what God has called us to do. If anything, we should trust in Him in faith, knowing that God, even though it seems impossible, my faith, my hope is in you, so I'm going to step out. Amen. That reminds me of, uh, of uh, Peter when he stepped out of the boat. Jesus said, come. Peter's faith wasn't in what was going on with the water. 
the boat being tossed to and from. He didn't look at the circumstances that were surrounding him. No, his focus was on Jesus. Jesus said, come, and he was obedient to listen to his voice, and he did exactly what Jesus told him to do. And he was able to walk on water temporarily until he noticed, oh, shoot. <laughs> when God tells you, come. When God says, Sally, pray for this person. When God says, lay hands on the sick. When God says, touch this person's eyes. When God says, hey, say this to this person. Man, if we do what he asks us to do and our focus is on him, he's faithful to accomplish his word. He will do, he will perform what he's asking you to do. And that's where fear can creep up like, huh, what if I look dumb? What if, I, what, if it, what if I'm wrong? What if I miss it? What if they turn around and slap me in the face? <laughs> Guys, just don't go touch a girl, you know, that's walking in the street and say, God felt, told me to pray for you. <laughs> Girls, if you're single, don't run up to a man and say, God told me to give me your number. <laughs> no. We have to trust him. We have to look to him. Amen? Amen. And between where we are today and where God has called us to be, there's a path that we have to encounter. We have to face this path in life. It's exactly what it is. It's the course. It's the path of life. And we know that in life there's going to be those trials. There's going to be those tribulations, there's going to be those temptations, there's, go, there's going to be the things that we, we, we deal with, there's things that we're going to have to tolerate, there's things that we're going to have to ultimately trust in God through. That's what life is about, it's about trusting God to get you to the next place, to, to, to take that next step. Uh, I'll use my little guy as an example. <coughs> Come here, bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're so cute. So, my wife and I, we have a 17 year old, we have an 11 year old, and then this dude. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we were done. We were done. <laughs> Say bye. We were done after our second. And, um,. <clears throat> So in 2017, we were on vacation. Uh, we went up to uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and uh, we were just late for, uh, they have a big parade uh, called Frontier Days. We're, so we were just late for that. Or no, we were actually too early for that. And so we were having a great time, you know, hanging out with the family in the country. Went to, to the Wrangler store and bought some boots. And, um, and so, we, uh, we came back home, and then we went on vacation again, went to Taos, New Mexico. And so, like, when we were there, you know, my wife kind of makes a comment, like, oh, she, we were eating food, breakfast, right? She was eating breakfast, she's like, oh, I don't feel good. And so, um, <laughs> you know, so lunch came around, we ate lunch, and you had some chicken or something like that. And, uh, like, that completely grossed her out. And, you know, she felt nauseated and felt like she was just going to let it go. And uh, come to find out, we get home. She, she did one pregnancy test, which came out negative. She did another one, which came out positive, right? And then finally, we're like, you know, let's go to the doctor. She went to the doctor. Yeah, you're having a baby. And so we're like, oh, God, what it, why, what? And for me, I was already ready to, to, like, go on vacations more and go to Europe. I have family that lives in Holland, so I'm like, I want to go to Holland. I want to I wanna just check out the world. I want to be able to travel more. And uh, God's like, no, not yet. <laughs> and, um, you know, so we look at circumstances and things that happen in life. We're like, God, why? Why? <laughs> you know, I look at, you know, things that happen with my mom. God, why? You know, you look at people that have passed away, you know, church, you know, church members. God, why? You know, we look at, you know, um, uh, two, three years ago, uh, 
so my wife and I, we did youth ministry for 12 years. Um, at the end of our run of youth ministry, uh, again, I got a call at work. Andres died. You know, got hit by a car. You know, a kid in our youth group. And I'm like, God, why? You know, and um, so it's like so many things can happen in life. So many things can challenge you, make your head go tilt. Like, what is going on? But ultimately, when those things happen, we know that that's life. God is not a respecter of individuals. There's, there's things that we have to go through in life, but no matter what tragedy, no matter what we face, our responsibility is to trust God with whatever happens. We don't know why certain things happen. We don't know why certain things don't happen. But regardless of what happens or what doesn't happen, is Jesus the focus of your attention? Is he the one that you look to to keep going forward? So as we embrace the journey God puts on us, I believe Jesus wants his power, his glory to be in operation. Don't worry, we're going to share some scripture. For those of you who like scripture, I'll share some. I like to talk, okay? Let me filter my thoughts out. So as we embrace this journey, I believe it, Jesus wants his power and his glory to be an operation and demonstration in our lives. I believe with all my heart that Jesus wants to be revealed. I believe it. I believe that the people that don't know him, I believe it's Jesus' desire to reveal himself to them. Jesus doesn't come from heaven and manifest himself in front of people and say, I'm Jesus, worship me, have a relationship with me. No. The Bible says we are his hands, we are his feet. We are the vessels that God chooses to use in demonstration and empower the love and the grace of God into this world. Amen. That, to me, that's awesome. That's Amen. sick that God wants to use us as his representatives in this world. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. So for those of you that feel like, you know what, my life doesn't matter. I'm just insignificant. I'm nothing when it comes to these other people that surround me. They're like this and they're like that. And I'm just like this. Like how can God use this when there's other people that have a greater stature, a greater position than I do? Well, I love it because God doesn't Choose those who are worthy. God doesn't choose those who are, are who have these great and amazing titles. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. I love it because the word says that God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God chose people like you and I, ordinary people. Yeah. Nothing significant about us. God chose us yeah. to be used by Him to minister His gospel, to reach people in this world. Yeah. And so the question is, are we going to allow fear to occupy our space? Are we going to allow fear to creep up in our lives? Or are we going to be able to trust God and overcome that fear? And just trust Him to help us through it. Amen, Amen brother. Amen, little Zane. Oh, cool story about that. How much time? Uh, oh, wow, I love 14 already. Cool story. So uh, my name is John. She didn't, want, she didn't want a junior. I have to say that. She did not want a junior. She's like, everybody's going to call him Porta John and, and this and that. I'm like, hey, come on. Come on. And so I'm like, okay. So I, I, I was clever. I had a light bulb come up over my head. And so I started Google searching John in different languages. And so it was cool. Uh, so I found uh, a Hebrew uh, translation came up, Zane, for John. So I was like, <laughs> So I was like, hey, Zane. Hey, Zane. And she kind of just like looks at me. She doesn't know what it is. She doesn't know it's John. And so she's like, eh, it's all right. It's all right. So I kept doing it, kept doing it. Finally, it grew on her. Zane. <laughs> Guys, that's what you need to do, OK? So. Amen. So many of us have been tested and tried and are currently being tested and tried right now. The Bible provides constant hope that regardless of the trials, the difficulties, and the challenges, we are reminded. In John 16, it says, Be of good cheer, 
or good courage because Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. Now, does that mean we're invisible to the things that happen in this world? No, we're not invisible. But guess what? Our spirit, our spirit is greater. The spirit of Jesus Christ is greater on the inside of us Amen. that overcomes obstacles, that overcomes challenges in life. Amen. So be of good cheer or be of good courage. Sorry, we've all been sick. We were, we're getting over it. In Jesus' name, no sickness in this church. We thank you, Father God, for healing. God, in Jesus' name, we, pro we proclaim the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ. We thank you for healing to manifest in the lives of every person, those who have been sick, those who have been dealing with issues. In Jesus' name, I declare it right now. The body of Christ is whole. The body of Christ is healed because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it. Receive it by faith. Say it out. It's mine. Amen. So Nelson Mandela, this was a quote from Nelson Mandela. I have learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers fear. Fear, I was scared to come up here. I was super scared. I'm always scared to come up here. <laughs> but you know what? We have to face fear. Yeah. Not by ourselves. Jesus has our back. Amen. So if Jesus didn't have my back, then yeah, I'd be scared. I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have stepped up here if I didn't know Jesus had my back. But because I know Jesus has my back and he's got me covered in spite of me, then I can face any obstacle. I can face any opposition because I know that if God is on my side, guess what? We can accomplish the things He places before us. Amen. Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good, bad, and indifferent. Amen? For those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Amen? Amen. What time does the game start? <laughs> oh shoot. You guys want to have a revival? <laughs> Just so you know, I sensed yesterday the Holy Spirit telling me that Rams were going to win. <laughs> and then next year was Cardinals and Ooh. Dallas. It could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> don't stone me next week if it was wrong, okay? I'm a man. I can fail. <laughs> Amen. So how to overcome fear? How do we overcome fear? So my first point to this, overcoming fear, is having an understanding of how much God loves you. Amen. Amen. John 3.16, it says, For this is how much God loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish spiritually, but have eternal life. God loves you so much. Amen. He sent his one and only Son. He didn't have any other sons. He had one Son. I couldn't imagine giving up any of my kids for anybody. Maybe myself, but I couldn't imagine giving, well, I have to. I'm part security here, too, so I have to <laughs> sacrifice myself. You know, if something happens, I have to be the front lines. But, um, so I'll do it. But him, my kids, I couldn't imagine that. I have three to, to give up, but I couldn't do that for any one of my three. And God having one, willing to send him in our place, for our judgment, for the wrath that we were deserving of. Mm -hmm. He sent him yeah. to take our place. Yeah. That's amazing love. Yes. Yes. That is great love beyond our understanding, beyond our comprehension of how much he loves us. Yes. Ephesians 3.18. These are all from the NLT. It says, May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep, is love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. 
God loves us so much. And guess what? In relation to fear and doing things and stepping out in faith, God is not going to ask you to do something when he knows you're going to, he's not going to ask you to do something to prepare you to fail. God's going to ask you to do something where he knows you're going to overcome. Where he knows that there's going to be a result behind when you pray for somebody or speak to somebody. There's going to, something's going to happen. So God doesn't ask you to do something when he knows you're going to get smacked in the face. No, God asks you to do something because he knows that either that person is ready to receive what God has or something is about to dramatically change in their life by just the word that you speak over them. In Lamentations 3.22, it says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Amen. The faithful love of Jesus Christ never ends. Amen. I see people falling asleep. I better talk louder again. <laughs> okay, here we go. I know they're just absorbing it. They're meditating. So the second point is knowing God. Ephesians 1, 16 through 18, it says, am I going to, okay, cool, sweet, you got it. So I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, verse 17, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in the knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people and who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I love that. Grow in the knowledge of God. There's so much to know about God. If you understand who God is, you know who you are. If you know who God is, then you know who you are. Because your identity is not in yourself. Your identity is in Jesus Christ. So if you know Jesus, you know yourself. Revelation to me. You know Jesus, you know yourself. Because your identity is in Christ. So when things are said and done, you know the final outcome of life itself. That we're victorious. That we win. And we're going to celebrate in heaven with Jesus and all of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. I'm excited. 2 Peter 3.18, NLT again, says you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Knowing and having an intimate relationship with Jesus will help us see ourselves the way Christ sees us. Many times we see and think things in a negative way. Excuse me. Knowing Jesus will give us greater understanding that we were not just an ordinary, we're not just ordinary individuals. Amen. So we're not ordinary people. We have been appointed by God himself to represent Jesus in this world. And the last point I want to make on this is His power is within us. When I think of power, I think of like electricity. You know, it, you plug something into a wall, what happens? The light turns on or a fan turns on. You see the results of when something is plugged into power. You know, and to me, the way I see this, the way I grasp this, the way I understand it is like when we allow God's power to not only fill us, but to flow out of our lives, you're going to re see results of his power and manifestation in, in people's lives. Amen. Ephesians 1.19, it says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. How many of you guys have operated in God's power? <clears throat> I mean, I've seen some things in demonstration in my life. I've prayed for people and, like, seen them get healed. I've seen a, an elderly guy, like, when he was in his 50s, when I used to work in construction. I've seen an elderly guy whose shoulder was, like, jacked up. Two years later, I see him walking into a job site that I'm at, and he sees me hanging up on some scaffolding. 
He yells at my name and he starts throwing his arm up in the air. He didn't know Jesus. He was an Indian guy. He, he didn't know Jesus. But I prayed for him in Jesus' name and it was Jesus that healed him. Yes. And that was awesome to see that. Yes. So the question is, like, man, how do I see God's power in operation in my life? Step out in faith. Amen. Trust in him. Amen. If God asks you to do something, man, just listen. <coughs> Take that step. Amen. Your heart's going to be pumping. You're going to be like, oh, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I didn't know what I was going to say when I came up here, but I just have to step out. And then as I open up my mouth, that's why I just dedicate the service to God. I say, God, do what you want to do. I'm going to open my mouth, but then when I open my mouth, I trust that you're just going to flow. Amen. Step of faith. Amen. So verse 20 says, uh, verse 19, uh, finishing up with that, it says, This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that can be in operation in your life. Amen. We haven't seen anybody raised from the dead yet in our church, but I believe it's possible. Yeah. We haven't seen anybody with, you know, uh, limbs that aren't there and then pray for them and then they grow out, but I definitely think it's possible. Amen. The Bible says, for with Jesus all things are possible. Amen. So why would I want to second guess? If, <coughs> if Scripture says that with Christ all things are possible, why would I want to second guess and say, nah, God can't do that? Mm -hmm. No, if anything, God, if you said you can do it, I trust you. I want to be that vessel to, to be used by you to, to, to see that happen. That's exciting. That's cool. Rick, I'm not going to cry. It's okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sorry. I'm kind of a joker. Verse 20 says, so the, yeah, again, this is the same power that raised Christ from the dead, seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. The Holy Spirit's power within us causes us to be able to do things we can't do on our own. It helps us to operate not only in the natural, but in the spiritual realm. Philippians 2.13, it says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Amen? Amen. So it's not a desire that you just came up with. Jesus, from the foundation of the world, began planting those desires, those thoughts, those ideas in you when he created you. And so it's as you grow and as you're maturing and as you become more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing, those things begin to manifest themselves. So God created you from the foundations of the world. From the beginning of time, he already had you in mind. He already placed that purpose and calling in your life. And so when those things manifest, you're just seeing the creation of what God did in your life from the foundation of the world. So trust Him. Amen.